Okay, what's going on, guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of Energized. Ross, introduce the guests, man. Today we have two of Ireland's finest professional martial artists, two coming from two fighting families. We have Caelan Lochran and we have James Sheen. Lads, how are you doing? Great, absolutely great. Caelan, how are you doing? Excited, lad. Very excited. That's brilliant. For the people just tuning in now, the two lads are competing at Cage Warriors 135 this Friday, live in the BEC Arena in Manchester, and exclusive on Lucy Foy Pass, Ross. Absolutely. I'm absolutely buzzing to see the lads get out there and uh, show their stuff. James, how is preparation going for you on this one? And are those brothers of yours giving you the hard rounds in the gym you're looking for? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Graham, especially. I'm so used to him being the little brother that I used to just mess around with in the gym a small bit. And now slowly but surely, he's like, is the one time now he's heavier than me. I'm just like, man, what, what, what's happening? What's ha- happening to me? And he's slowly like getting more and more shots each sparring session. Now he's just straight up beat me. <laughs> so the fuck, the disrespect of the little brother beat me up, but uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, Matthew Matthew's out injured at the moment, and um, he'll be back soon. But uh, yeah, Graham uh, Graham's serious serious level now. Yeah, and did it uh, did it go in your benefit now that you have the likes of like Dean Barry getting ready for a UFC debut, Moz Price uh, fighting Showtime Pettis soon, and um, PFL, and then yourself all getting ready for fights at the same time as well as well yeah. as Reds are doing Polaris. We all know he's still one of the hardest rounds in the gym. Yeah, yeah, it's it's exactly. just um, it's just great to have like a good buzz around the gym. Like everyone's on the, kind of the same path, and like it's the same mentality that like everyone wants to get in good work and stay the stay the extra rounds at the at the end, and kind of just pick each other's brains. Like see, uh, like when other people are going through weight cuts as well, it's kind kind of nice just to uh, kind of confine in there in them as well. So it's good. Good, good, uh, good buzz in the gym. And then, Keenan, what about Tiernan? and how is he getting on? And uh, I take it he's your number one sparring partner. I think I'd say the wars that you guys have over the breakfast table is enough that alone. <laughs> uh, the wars in the gym. Uh, he's getting a bit too big for me now. That can't be honest. <laughs> uh, Mike's probably my number one sparring at the minute. Mike Gundy, to be honest. But I uh, Tiernan, he's uh, he's actually fighting on Saturday night, so. We're kind of been in camp the whole time together, to be honest. And then, obviously, uh, UFC London, you were at it to your teammates. Fought on it. Obviously, Tom Aspinall won the biggest winners of the night. And then, obviously, uh, the, it was very sad to see Mike Rundy lose, especially with his father being sick. Um, what were the emotions like of that night for you? That's it. Like, when, you, when you're fighting that level and you bring two lads to UFC, even if you're fighting at fucking any level, if you bring, like, multiple guys to a show, you're probably going to end up at least one fucking loss. So it was like, uh, obviously, absolutely gutted for Mike. But then Tom was more just the same. Like, more just say, oh, I'm just surprised. Like, not surprised, but like, like kind of like everyone else. Like, holy fuck, that was, that was so easy, more than anything. But uh, that, was the, that was the one thing, like, all of us watching it. Hi, Tom. Was just like, man, that, was, that looks so easy. Lad, I was thinking to see him. No, he looked, he was, he was looking good in the gym. He had, like, very specific guys, he, like, Six ten get six ten guys in every fucking day for Volkov, and then he uh, I smashed it. To be honest, he's, he's flying out. Any tough five or something? Tough yeah, I, th- I think so. Yeah, I think you, on, Bats. Can, can you tell us how much of you you've improved since joining Team Cowboy as well? Because like you've been known very like very well around here, but can you tell us how much you've improved since moving over to Liverpool? Uh. Honestly, I, I couldn't. Uh, this is why I'm so excited to perform this weekend. I've kind of been on the, the, like, just really been in the gym. The whole COVID, the whole pandemic, we had, like, guys that were competing in all the Cage Warriors coming in, Cage Warriors champions, Cage War- Bellator guys, a lot of big names in the UK because whenever a lot of the gyms were closed down, most like, our gym kind of became, like, a hub because of that, like, elite thing was Till was fighting Whitaker and stuff. 
and I was fight or sparring with these guys and training under Colin Hearn and these cage wars champions and Bellator names were coming in and I've been flying flying in the gym and I'm just so excited to one sign with cage wars because I know now I can get tested in, on the big show and show my skills but uh I can't wait. Like I couldn't, I couldn't sum up how much I've improved and how much I've changed since I've come to Team Cowboy. Uh, confidence-wise, wrestling is that's the most, uh, the biggest change I would say. Whenever I used to fight in the amateur scene coming up, I used to just strike and then guys would take try to take me down and they would get me down because like no wrestling, and I would maybe reverse position and win. But now, I think I've went full circle because, because since I've come here the last four years, my my main training partner has been Mike. In that wee tiny cowboy cage, like tiny cage with an elite level wrestler. Yeah. And I've completely changed. I've become I like an elite level scrambler, I feel like elite level scrambler. I don't believe there's a bantamweight on the planet could at least hold me down at the minute. Has become my yeah. thing. So I wouldn't uh, I couldn't actually I couldn't sum it up. But I also know that words mean fuck all and you have to go out and do it when it matters. So but and, the show, the, the, to be honest. and the show to be the the light the lights will be shining brightly this Friday because this will be your first pro appearance on Cage Warriors. But James, you're almost, you're a bit of a veteran almost. This will be your fifth pro appearance in the Cage Warriors cage. Um, yeah, yeah, my fifth, yeah. And uh, James, uh, the welterweight division's um uh, a bit more up in the air at the moment. Um. Obviously, Ian Gary uh, left the UFC, and that that fate or belt has been vacated ever since. Do you think a win here puts you right in line for a title shot? No, I don't think one win. I think by the end of the year, though, uh, I will have stayed my claim in the division. Um, like I know they've they've said about Belfast as well. I feel like I'll get a dominant win here. Go to Belfast, show that. Uh, I can pull in a good few fans and then um, put on another dominant performance. And then I don't know what Cage Wars plans are for the rest of the year, but I'm going to get three good, solid wins underneath uh, under my uh, banner there today. Uh, sorry, not today, this year. And then um, I feel like that will put me in a serious position because there's, there's, there's a few guys that like are kind of there and have been very active, like, I know Figlak's been very active, and now what's it? Berlinson is fighting this weekend, I think, mm. against someone else who, to be honest, I've never even heard the other guy, but he, he must be good. But it's definitely up in the air. Like Proctor, yeah, Re- Reese McKee is still floating about as well. Yeah, Re- Reese McKee there as well, mm. and then um, Ad- Adam Proctor. I remember he fought Mason Jones for the for the title, and then he kind of just went missing. I don't know if he's coming back or. Or what? But uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting times in the welterweight division, anyway. And are they the names you're looking to get your yourself in there with for come June twenty fifth? Anyone, literally, all I'm folks. I, I like to focus on one fight at a time, but uh, anyone, wh- whoever cage works gives me, uh, like as you see from my from my uh, my record, like that, I'll I'll fight anyone, regardless. Like Matt Bonner on my pro debut, and then. In like, I'll fight anyone. Yeah, I love it because we're looking at his record. Ross uh, James's only defeats have been to former Cage Warriors champions. Yeah, and um, this guy, this guy, uh, hasn't hasn't won a Cage Warriors belt, uh, so he's he's in for a rough night. That's what that's what I'm gonna say. Uh, Keenan, what about yourself? Uh, obviously, Don Mullen's champ there. Uh, I know, I know, you've had a a few words with him. You're no stranger to a uh, bit of beef on Instagram. So, uh, what, what's <laughs> you know, what, what's your you take? Know what it was, lad? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have mentioned <laughs> anything to do with Dominic Gruden because I, I'd be honest, like I wouldn't think, I would never say like something that I don't deserve. I don't deserve to fight for a case where I've only fought a few fucking bums and because the, the fallouts and stuff, this and the regional scene. So I don't deserve to fight Dominic. If they give me a fight with Dominic, I will smash his fucking head in. I just don't deserve it yet. Same as Nathan Flash, I don't deserve to fight him yet. Give me two or three wins. Actually, Dominic's away to the contenders, isn't he? Uh, it looks that way. It looks that way. Looks that way Nothing's yeah. been confirmed. Ah, yeah. It looks that way. So, if he goes away, the belt becomes vacant. I don't beat this guy at the weekend. Deserve to be in a title. I'm also in no rush. I'm in no rush for the UFC. I don't need to take time to beat the guys in cage wars right now, but... um. I, if that belt becomes vacant, 
I don't know who they're going to fight for, probably Nathan or somebody. But I'd like to fight Kingsley in Belfast. After, after, if I get this win, I don't deserve to fight Nathan and anyone like that, I don't think. But I think if I get a dominant win this weekend against this kid, I think I could fight. I think I do deserve to fight someone like Kingsley. And I'd fight him in the Belfast show if I could get that. Yeah, and then then looking at this this Friday's card, uh, what do you know about back, back to uh, your opponent back of your Uh I I've been watching. Only actually got him like last Friday or last Thursday. Yeah, like it's there. been short notice. Yeah, um, I, I will it's just short notice on the opponent. I've known about this. Yeah. This is like the first time as a pro I've known about a date for like ages. I've known about the date, but I only got him last week. He just can't. Um, I don't know, he fights like he's, he just comes at you like a madman. I think his last fight, he, he came out and he finished the game in like two minutes. But like, his, he's, I don't think he's very good. He's like aggressive and a brawler, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's the best in us. Um, James, I just want to come back to yourself. Obviously, we've only seen you out in the cage warrior cage once in the last two years. Um, what, what should Carol Mishlak expect come uh, this weekend? Uh... What should he expect? Uh, a tough, a tough fight. <laughs> um, are we going to see the best like, version of James Sheen? Are we? Yeah. What James Sheen are we, or should we expect this Friday? Absolutely the best. Like it's it's so cliche that like you hear every single fight. I'll be like, oh yeah, th- this camp is the best camp, and every time I'm coming in here, great. But like. It's it just is like it, it just is the best camp I've had. Like my weight's on point. I've I've worked exactly what I wanted to work. I got the sparring in that I wanted to get in, and I think the opponent is perfect for me. And James, who are you bringing over to Manchester with you? It's Andy Redzer and then uh, Graham as well. Oh, you had to have the brown in the corner. You you wouldn't have it in the way. Have to in the corner. That sounds like some good after session. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and what about yourself, Keelan? Who's making who's making the trip uh, to Manchester? A much shorter trip uh, for yourself. Uh, there's a few lads coming over for like the for the session, the session. like but uh, they've been in the corner of the Colin Hearn and Mike Grundy probably. I don't like Tiernan because he's like fighting the next night in Liverpool. He'll be in the crowd, but I don't know if he'll be like backstage. So Mike and Colin. Best of skill for Tiernan as well on Saturday night. Yeah, that's absolutely good. I can't say enough. Really looking forward to seeing it. Um, super excited for the up and coming uh, Belfast card as well. Um, we can't wait to see all the fighters oh, on sure. that. And I think uh, with two big wins for yourself, you put yourself in a great position to get on that card. That's exactly what we want to see. Uh, before we do let you guys go, um, different fighters at this stage of their career have sort of different hopes and aspirations. Um, Caelan, I'll let you start with yourself. What's what's the end goal for your career? Is it to go to the UFC? Is it to become world champion there? I know that's such a probably cliche thing to say, but some people actually have uh, different hopes and dreams. So, w- what are yours? To be the best bantamweight on the planet, to be the UFC champion. That's why I left my friends and family and moved to Liverpool to to find elite level training. That's my goal: to be the UFC bantamweight world champion. And James, what about yourself? I, I know Matthew became the first ever IMAF gold medalist from Ireland, so like you have a bit to do now to catch up and surpass that fella. Oh yeah, well once I get that cage for his belt, I feel like that trumps that I feel like that trumps <laughs> that amateur amateur belt like so yeah, yeah, well we'll focus on the cage for his belt for the moment, but uh yeah, that's that's definitely in the pipeline. You'd love to see a bad one, don't you? Yeah, no, that was a great question. I mean, this is now going to be up in UFC Fight Pass, so it'd be great to look back uh, over the next few years and see how much the lads progressed because like, we're fortunate to have gotten to, into this position, Ross, and it's great to share it with the fellow Irish MMA athletes. Uh, lads, before we wrap things up as well, like uh, things that are really important for fighters is sponsors. Have you got any sponsors you need or friends or family you want to give a shout-out to before we wrap things up? Uh, Caelan, you can go first, bud. Uh, ben Burb Construction out in San Francisco to... Two lads from Armada that own a business out there. They, uh, they're they like mad in the MMA. They fucking go to every UFC event, every fucking Bellator event across America. They're fucking mad in it. They help me in turn more than you could believe. And the Concordia Clinic over here, they are physio and hyperbar chamber and all that stuff. Nice. James, what about yourself, bud? Team, Kevin, obviously. Yeah, shout out Team Kevin as well. James, what about yourself, bud? 
Uh, just want to shout out just uh, him barbers oh, we sponsor me um, with the fresh cuts then holo organics kombucha saw me out that healthy gut and then uh, yeah just team rhino as well exactly and then make sure to tune in this Friday to watch Keelan Lockran and James Sheen compete at uh, sorry, uh, Cage Warriors, Manchester, live on UC Fight Pass. Ross, I'll give you the final word, bud. Yeah, guys, just want to say a special shout out to people who look after us, Monster Energy. Uh, sometimes the can does come in, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on the green screen. There we go. Uh, they're sorting the lads out with free monsters to beat the band. Uh, they sent us out 20 cases, I think, what, last week, two weeks ago. Um, so there's only about 10 cases left, absolutely milling through them. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, shout out to UFC Fight Pass for having us, absolute legends to work for. Um, if you are watching this video on YouTube, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and as always, stay, stay energized. Energize, shout up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you're doing you're doing some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.